I'm Ray, and this is the Beauville and Newtown Model Railroad. And Good evening track gang or whatever time of the day it happens to be for you uh, it happens to be Tuesday uh, February the 1st uh, 2022 this is gonna be vlog number four uh, for 2020 for 2022 um, and as you can tell I'm back here in the work area um, the reason why I'm back here is uh, <laughs> I've kind of come to a point on doing the scenery that I can't do much more why is that you, you haven't done anything well this is kind of true uh, the reason why I'm not moving forward with it at the moment is the fact that I need to get a hold of get some get, I've got to get a hold of some paint uh, I'm gonna make a run to uh, Home Depot and get some latex paint uh, to be able to paint the roads and the ground and things of that nature and unfortunately the paint that I have being now that it's probably close to 30 years old some of it some of it's not some of it's probably closer to 15 um, the, the paints dried and it can't be recovered um, I figured that out the other night so I'm like well I guess I need to make a trip to Home Depot well I figured well I'll do that when I get back from vacation that was until we had our neat little snowstorm uh, this past Friday into Saturday and things kind of went a little bit awry with that and you know it wasn't major here but it was enough that it really screwed things up um, and not to mention the fact that I had something I had to take care of Saturday night and then uh, my family my brother and his family came down for a few hours on Sunday so I really didn't get a chance to uh, to do much, and as I mentioned in Sidetrack Sunday number five for January, you know I was literally getting down there to get online to right like 10, 12, 20 minutes, a half an hour before my my Sidetrack Sunday. So I haven't been to the store yet. Um, so I'm hoping, and it may not happen this weekend either, because this weekend's the train show. Um, so I'm like, well, I've got other things that I need to do anyway. I can take a break, go ahead and fix the things that I need to fix, and we can move on. So last night, and I didn't film any of this, but I came down here and I did some work um, at the workbench uh, on a couple of things that I've got floating around now. Um, those of us that have been around for a long time, um, these are what they call tracksters. Now, I've got the rail bus, and you all have seen that because, well, I had to pick on uh, the train freak about that. But um, I don't know how well it, it's two wheel drive, and those are also the pickups. Well, this thing had never run right, and I had actually put uh, weights into it at one point. To try and help it because it would bounce down the tracks so I got that fixed last night and now it now runs it now it, it, it run it doesn't run perfect because of what it is but it runs uh, so the next thing will be once I get uh, my airbrush booth and get myself and I'm gonna get my I'm gonna upgrade my airbrush I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a little air compressor uh, talk to the wife and she's like not a problem go ahead and put it in the basement okay <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and get myself an airbrush down here and I'm going to go ahead and I'll be able to start working on some of the things that I want to repaint. And that will be one of them. Um, so, while I was down here last night as well, um, I, um, I've actually got two of these. Um, these are Crown Line uh, Pennsylvania Railroad 
uh, log cars. This one here is the, the one, this one here was broke. And if you remember in my intro video for 2022, it was actually laying on the bench sideways with the one set of trucks off. Um, now these are really unique because they've got a pivot point in the middle and then each truck can pivot as well. So there's an arm that the trucks actually pivot, the whole, the whole mechanism moves. Well, the one screw the where that bar sits, um, that had really gotten, that it had worn out. So what I did is I actually, and that's going to be hard as heck to see, but I took a spacer and actually put it across the, or put it around the screw, then put the screw back in over the bar. Hey, guess what? It's now fixed. So now I can go ahead and take the logs off of it. That one needs to be renumbered. Um, because obviously, like I said, I've got two of them, so I got to renumber that one. Okay, no big deal. Um, I was wondering why that was sitting. I uh, now I know why. Because the bottom is there. It goes. Um, I finally finished up my Virginian or my Virginia uh, commemorative car. I finally got it all together uh, last night. And the last thing that I worked on. <laughs> You, you, you know, <laughs> some, sometimes sometimes you end up doing something and you don't realize you did it. Um, this is an old AHMC liner uh, painted up for the Lackawanna. And actually, the front of this thing uh, had been cut off at one point, And I went ahead and you can tell that it's, it still needs some help. i got to get some uh, plastic putty to go ahead and fill in the gap. This piece had been cut off. Uh, and literally thrown away. Well, that's because at one point in time on our old layout, this was this pilot would grab. So we cut it off, and we didn't run the thing that much anyway. So at any rate, um, but what I found out was this thing was not running worth a darn. And <laughs> when I had re-rigged it, and what I mean by re-rig it, originally when these things were made. The pickups were all in the front. So what I ended up doing is, is I ended up putting a bar in the back. Or was it the back? Actually, I take that back. It was the rear. The rear was the pickups. So what I did is I actually put a brass uh, uh, feeler inside of here that picks up power from the front truck and there's also a and of course there's also a feeler on the side that picks up power from the rear well when I went back and looked somehow or other I didn't realize that the rear tr the rear truck was already isolated I had actually put the rubber on the side with the feeler well guess what that doesn't work very well because the only thing that's making contact is the flange so I went ahead and I flipped the wheels over last night. This thing runs like a freaking top now. So I've got another locomotive that I can put back on the layout. Um, I was going to, I'm, I'm still debating as to what I am going to do with the Norfolk and Western. Um, I've got to really dig into it and see exactly why the one rear truck is grabbing or the rear truck on the uh on the tender is grabbing uh i thought that i had it fixed i don't um i'm gonna have to go in there and really take a look and see exactly what it is that's causing it to get stuck so um that may be the next thing i'm gonna actually the next thing i'm gonna work on is i've got stuff that's out in the uh box of shame as i call it um that I need to work on because that stuff's a little bit more important. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab, I'm going to clean the, the bench off a little bit. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to grab the box of shame, bring it back here and uh, do some more work. So we'll be back in a bit. Well, hello again. It happens to be Thursday, uh, February the 3rd, uh, 2022. And I thought I'd give you all a quick uh, update as to where things are. Um, <clears throat> first things first, I went through the box of, or the box of shame as I call it, uh, that cropped up after the last half op session that I did. And um, I got everything straightened out, I believe. Um, 
found a couple of really interesting issues. Um, if anybody, know, uh, if for those that have followed me for a while, I've got a uh, old Atlas slash Cotto uh, RS3 uh, that's painted up for the Louisville and Nashville. Well, for whatever reason, the last time I went to use it, the couplers were like way high. I don't okay well this is a little strange so I took it back to the bench and lo and behold I'm guessing the last time I took it apart to uh, do maintenance on it I actually reversed the walkway which happens to have the couplers on it and by doing that it was actually sitting up higher than what it was supposed to and would not settle in place so I figured it out took the walkway spun it 180 and put the top back on and everything is good now um, all of the tank cars that ended up on the floor, uh, from, I'm trying to think that that was Cytra, I think that was the, the, either the holiday show or the after holiday show, uh, when I was testing out my new handheld throttles, uh, my DC handheld throttles, um, I got those all straightened out, the one, um, coal hopper, I got that fixed, um, two box car, actually one refrigerator car, one box car that I had that were just way too light. I got those taken care of. So unfortunately the box of shame, the stuff that I brought back over is still over on the, um, over by the, over at the layout. I have to unload it and put everything back where it belongs. Um, however, <laughs> um, I noticed, uh, late last year, uh, and when I was real, actually when I was doing the last operation session, that the storage drawers that I had built underneath of the hidden yards uh, were starting to get, they were starting to get stuck. The one was actually coming off track. And really in reality, what I ended up figuring out was being what I do here, which is repurpose, reuse, recycle. Um, I had used recycled lumber to put those shelves together probably wasn't the best idea um they're not braced correctly they're not they're, they're not built correctly and they're starting to have issues especially with all the rolling stock that i've got in there now so what's the fix well the fix is going to be me getting to home depot or wherever and getting i'm going to buy some one by ones um obviously i don't need two by fours underneath there i'm I, i'm I'm 98% certain that if I build this thing out of one by ones, I'm going to be fine. It doesn't need to be, it, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to be functional, um, which it's been functional. It's just over time and not thinking about it. It, like I said, it's just, there's, there's too much weight there and there's not enough bracing underneath. So I'm going to eventually have to fix that, but of course, one of the things that I had talked about on one of the sidetrack Sundays uh, was the car card and weight build system. Um, you know, car cards, and I actually found my weight bills. And I actually figured it out the other day that I can do a four cycle weight bill. Um, so I'm, I've actually gone ahead and put into an Excel sheet what I want those four cycles to be, at least for the locals. Um, I'm still going to have to work on the uh, through freights, and I also have to work on um, being able to rotate through the box cars, the gondola cars, uh, the 30 ton hoppers, uh, and the gondolas, because, and the refrigerator cars, because those have to. Those not only are going to be on through freights, but they're also going to feed the locals. So I have to figure out some way of, of working those in to where they're not always, the same cars aren't always going to the industries. They're being shuffled. So one of the things I'm going to have to look into. Uh, but that's pretty much where we are. Um, I'm still looking into what's going on with the J-Class uh, number 611. Um, I've, I played with it a little bit the other night to try and see if I could figure out why it doesn't want to stay on the track in the, uh, 
and the S-curve, and I think I've got a pretty good idea as to what's going on. I just have to come up with a way to make it functional. Um, it's not the locomotive. The locomotive will... The locomotive, I think, will stay on the track as long as the tender doesn't drag it all, and that's kind of what's been happening. Um, the thing will run across 22-inch radius, not an issue. It just does not like 22-inch radius S-curves. Don't know why. So, one thing I haven't done here recently, and we're getting ready to get to that right now. Yes, folks, it's shout out time. Um, <laughs> I hadn't done this in a while, so we're going to go back to, um, uh, the end of the end of uh, or actually the end of the year uh, We got Dylan Shepard my model railway uh, We got Dan's model model railroading journey We got David Boyce We've got Brandon Harris and Just the other day I picked up Andy Cohn K-O-N trains um, and Andy Andy, from what I've been able to determine, is doing uh, what looks to be um, uh, Pennsylvania railroads uh, right around the time the Conrail took over. Because I saw a lot of um, Reading and Pennsyl uh, Pennsylvania and um, a couple others, and they had their reporting marks uh, kind of marked out or had CR over top of them. So that's Conrail. That's cool. Um, I know I subscribe to a couple of channels, um, one of which, and I'm hoping I still have it here, Boomer Diorama, the Immersive Model Railroad. Um, and that one there popped up the other day uh, as a recommended video, um, and I went and looked, and he has a rather interesting, has some rather interesting scenery ideas, and he also shows how he does his uh, rail in uh, and concrete or asphalt or dirt, however. Um, uh, so buried, he calls it modeling buried track and crossings. Um, so that was really cool. So I, I know I subbed to him. I don't think he has uh, watched any of my stuff yet, but that's okay. Uh, the other one was Anthony's Hobby Corner uh, model trains. Um, he had an interesting video on building um, cheap and realistic ground cover, um, taking um, that, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, the stuffing material that you'd see in like pillows and things of that nature, kind of stretching it out a little bit, uh, coating it with an adhesive, and then taking uh, floral foam and running it over a, uh, a grater and grating it. And then doing that again with one color and then coming back and doing it with another one and then actually putting ground foam scenic foam on top of that gives it a really unique uh, three-dimensional depth so it's if you got a chance I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put all the links to all the channels below uh, go check them out um, and uh, that's all I've got for this vlog so you all know the deal wait for the highball green tracks ahead We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We will see ya.